I'm Nick McDearis. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I collect Omega watches and I'm the Omega moderator for Watch You Seek. So I got into watches as a uh, as a as a you know a little kid. My dad always had watches. He's always worn a watch, although they were never very nice watches, so to speak. Uh, in the mid '90s, kind of got interested in James Bond. Just really liked the movies. You know, I'm I'm nine, ten years old, so you know I go to the uh, the jewelry store, the uh, Omega salesman there. He was actually nice enough and saw that I had a genuine interest in the watch to just kind of give me some you know Omega paraphernalia. Here we've got you know Pierce Brosnan wearing the watch. In the blue dial, blue bezel, Omega Seamaster is James Bond's choice. So, you know, when I'm 10 or 11 years old reading this, it was like a, an unattainable goal, right? Because, you know, you have you don't have any money when you're that age. And given that my dad didn't have a nice watch, and you know, I'm looking at it thinking, man, you know, one day I want to get that watch. I remember my freshman year of college, like, you know, when I was probably doing a little bit too much of this, but not paying attention in class, I would be drawing the Omega logo. Like just kind of doodling the logo, I just thought it looked cool. So, literally, my first nice watch, uh, which you know, was many many watches ago that has been sold, was a uh, Omega Speedmaster automatic, and I think I bought it for you know eight hundred dollars or somewhere thereabouts. But the goal was to get this watch. You know, I've since since bought one, and uh, you know, this watch, to me, you know, it's not necessarily a very special watch as far as prominence goes. I mean, it's a very, very mass-produced watch. They, you know, I've heard that after the James Bond series came out that this was their best-selling watch for a number of years, and you know, they've since kept it around for uh, multiple different iterations. But, you know, I've worn it in you know, two of my best friend's weddings. I wore it in my wedding when it was uh, coming time for you know, for us to get married, my, my wife knows that I, I have like a sentimental attachment to some watches. So it was like a real conversation that we had of, all right, you know, which, which watch are you going to wear for the ceremony? It's, you know, an interesting watch and the fact that it's a you know, very slim uh, dive watch by dive watch standards. It's only, you know, 12, 13 millimeters thick. The quality speaks for itself and, and it's never been serviced and it's running, you know, quite well. So my dad works for Georgia Power, and, uh, and his dad retired from Georgia Power as well. He started Georgia Power in 1943, so he grew up in uh, you know, the Great Depression, was born in 1916, made it through, uh, I want to say it was seventh grade before he had to leave to work on the family farm and ended up working for Georgia Power throughout the rest of his career. Um, my dad's dad, uh, Carl, he passed away in, in, uh, in the early 90s, but knowing that I was into watches, my grandmother, his wife, gave me all of his old watches. It was a box of broken old watches, so I kind of stuffed them away as, you know, mementos that my grandmother had given me and, and put them in my, uh, my dresser. Went to college, came back home, uh, was going through the dresser, and now, you know, this is post-college, so I'm actually really into watches at this point. I find a box, and it's, it's my, my grandfather's Accutron watch that he was given for 30 years of active service at uh, Georgia Power Company. So in the back it reads, you know, Carl R. McDearis, 30 years active service, 1943-1973. And I go to my dad and I said, you know, hey dad, you know, I know you're coming up on your 30th year and they're going to give you a Rolex watch, you know, in, in honor of 30 years of active service. Did they do that when, you know, when Papa was still alive? And he kind of thought about it and he's like, Probably not, you know, and, and I highly doubt that they would have done that anyway for somebody that was, uh, you know, just a manual laborer essentially, you know, reading meters. So then I knew that he, he knew that it didn't exist. I sent the watch off and had it serviced by a watchmaker in, in Sweetwater, Tennessee that specializes in Accutrons. And it just looked perfect. You know, it looked perfect except for it just, it had a nice, developed a nice patina over, you know, 30 plus years and uh, I gave it to my dad for Christmas a couple of years ago. And it was, you know, outside of giving my, my wife her engagement ring, it was absolutely the best gift that I've ever given anybody. So he still wears it today. So fast forward to a couple of years ago in the fall of 13, um, my dad had his 30th anniversary of Georgia Power and, you know, he gets this watch. It's a Rolex Air King, just a very classic watch, 34 millimeters, very small by today's standards. It was kind of modeled after, my understanding, modeled after Royal Air Force pilots that wore these watches during World War II, and they weren't called Air Kings at the time, but my understanding is that you have Hans Wilsdorf, uh, you know, kind of in a 
tip of the hat rename the watch to the, the Air King, you know, and, and, and harken back to those pilots that wore those watches that really liked the, the big dial at the time. And now, by today's standards, it's a very, a very, uh, very small watch. But anyway, so um, they give these watches to Georgia Power employees for 30 years of active service now. And my dad gets the watch in fall of 2013. And, uh, and I go check it out at the house. I'm all excited about it, ch checking it out. And, and so I'm like, what are you going to do with it? He was kind of trying to figure out, you know, do I wear it? Do I not wear it? He calls me on the phone when I'm at work a couple of weeks later. And he said, hey, you know, I've, I've really thought about what I want to do with this watch. And, you know, I think it'll be cool that I'm wearing my dad's watch. And I want you to wear your dad's watch. Out of my collection, while I collect predominantly Omega watches, like that's the one that, you know, would, would never, ever, ever, ever sell. Part of the reason why you know I like watches is um, I like to develop memories associated with wearing them, right? So you know, when, um, on a boring Monday and day at the office, you know, I can look down my wrist and think, oh man, that's uh, that's the Omega Seamaster that you know I wanted to have so bad when I was a kid. Now I have it. You know, I've worn it in you know, multiple weddings, worn it my wedding, a lot of adventures. Um, so, you know, when I get to go do an adventure, um, you know, uh, climb Mount Kilimanjaro in October, you know, part of the thing I think about is, like, okay, what watch do I want to bring with me on this adventure? This watch is the watch that I wore to uh, Kilimanjaro, and it was kind of a natural choice because uh, it's light, it's titanium, it's uh, quartz, and, uh, you know, it's another one of the watches that, you know, as a kid I just really got into. The X33 at the time was a pretty pretty breakthrough watch. You know, it had all these different functions. It was, uh, you know, a titanium piece, which there, there weren't a ton of them out in that day. And it was something that I just thought looked cool when I was a kid. I mean, it's kind of hard not to imagine, you know, a 10-year-old kid looking at this and being like, "Wow, it's a really neat watch." I've, I've been into Planet Oceans. I love I love Omega. I love dive watches. I love sport watches. And this is the uh, 2201.50 Planet Oceans. So they made the Planet Ocean, a number of different iterations, you know, um, but undoubtedly the most classic version of the Planet Ocean is this one. I mean, it's black dial, black bezel, white Arabics, and it was the first of the Planet Ocean line. But it's a really cool watch just because it's a, it's a modern watch, but it has a lot of design features that harken to, you know, Seamasters of old that were introduced in 1948. I bought this watch brand new in, uh, in August of 2011 and got married that fall and uh, wore this watch on my honeymoon. And you know, shortly thereafter, I, I bought my, my Rolex Submariner. And you know, being a newlywed you know, with, a, with a new house and you know, the expenses that go along with it, I was having a tough time justifying keeping both. And I sold the watch, the Planet Ocean, to a good friend of mine in Atlanta, who's also uh, a watch collector, Bill Powell. And I'd gotten to know Bill through Watch You Seek and getting together for, for lunches. And, and he was looking for one of these watches. And I said, well, hey, perfect time. And I'm actually selling mine. You know, I'll sell it to you. Shortly thereafter, like immediately regretted the decision because, you know, not being true to myself and like knowing that, hey, like part of the reason why I really like watches is the idea of developing memories and, and wearing them to significant events. And, and that's just something that I really like about it. I like the idea of being able to have something that you know, hey, I wore that watch when on my honeymoon. Anyway, Bill didn't want to sell the watch because he loved it. And I told him, I said, Bill, you know, if you ever decide that you want to sell that piece, just give me right a first refusal. Like, I, I just want to buy it back. So he called me up uh, about, about, I don't know, three or four weeks ago and said, hey, you know, I think I'm going to sell that watch. You know, I've since gotten into a little bit less expensive watches and not wearing it that much. And, you know, if it's yours, we want to sell it back to you. So. I literally went and met him, you know, that same day, less than 12 hours later, and, and bought it back from him. And you know, it's uh, it's hit firmly in the category of uh, of never sell, which would would fall into the the X33, my Seamaster, this Planet Ocean, and my dad's Rolex. So, part of the kind of my evolution of thought process on watches is that you know they're meant to be worn, they're meant to be scuffed up. I mean, a lot of people really, really love vintage watches. And like, uh, for instance, I love my, my dad's Accutron that he wears all the time. He wears it for special occasions mainly now because it has, you know, history behind it that's related to me and my family. Um, but I'm not as interested in vintage watches right now just because like, I want these watches to one day be vintage and have a certain memories that I associate with myself wearing them. I want to be able to enjoy these watches and one day look back and kind of be able to share some stories of adventures that they accompanied me with.